good, good morning. Uh, being pragmatic, <clears throat> I'm going to look at uh, the ways that we say things and the ways that they are understood by other people. And unfortunately, the moment words leave our mouths, it's like letting go of an Irish setter. You have no idea where they're going to go and if they're ever going to come back. Um, so our context is what is normal and what is abnormal. And I would say that uh, speaking is the most normal thing that we have as humans. That's what makes us human. Um, so how can it possibly be problematic? We've been talking for quite a while. Uh, pragmatics is the linguistic study of how people say what they mean and other people misunderstand what they mean. So uh, this is, these problems are greatly increased when we are um, out of our normal communicative social zone, when in fact my normal bumps up against your normal. And um, that's what I'm going to look at. <clears throat> I'm going to give you an example which is about, um, it's not even about language, but it's definitely about pragmatism. Uh, I'm Scottish. <laughs> you can't tell from my accent, but actually, I am Scottish. I spent almost two pounds on uh, lessons to improve my dialect. Every penny well worth spending. Uh, so, in Scotland, uh, if you're a man, you shake hands with people three times. When you first meet them, uh, at New Year, if you can still operate your hands, and uh, at funerals, and that's all. When I was 20, I moved to France. People there spend almost their entire lives shaking hands if they're not kissing each other. Um, so for me, I was quite, I was perceived as being quite standoffish because I shook hands once, and then after that, it was like I had anvils for um, cufflinks. I just would stand there and people would be... <clears throat> so, that was a problem for me in France. Uh, then after that, I realized, okay, you shake hands with everybody except women. Then you kiss them, but you don't really kiss them and all of that. So all of that caused a certain amount of um, misunderstanding. Uh, then I came to Turkey 10 years after I'd been living in France. And uh, I discovered that uh, the whole thing about shaking hands and kissing, I, I was actually very pleased when it came to the sort of limited headbutts that people give each other <laughs> instead of kissing. You know, it's, and it's more Scottish, that's called a Glasgow kiss. Oh, right. <laughs> okay. So, um, there, were, there were certain uh, pragmatic differences in, let's say, body language. Um, however, we're going to focus, focus on... Um, the linguistic problems that can come from misunderstandings. Uh, so there, there, there are fairly obvious ones, which aren't really pragmatic, they're really linguistic. So for example, in French, you have tu and vous. In German, you have du and sie. In Turkish, you have sen, sis, and then for extra politeness, sizzler. Okay? <clears throat> So, when I first went to France, I was 20 years old. My French teachers had told me, you always say vous to people that you don't know. So I was saying vous to people who were the same age as me, or even younger. And this made me appear to be kind of snobbish and standoffish and arrogant. Me! Incredible. Okay? And then, 10 years later, I came to Turkey. I'd completely given up on all of this vous stuff in French. And so I was saying sen to everybody, which made me sound also kind of disdainful and disrespectful towards people. Um, so these, these are kind of lexical problems and grammatical problems. Um, there are also other things which are, are sort of um, to do with the sayings that people use. Uh, so for example, in American English, there's a, a very nice phrase, yeah, good luck with that. Okay, which you may think, oh, he's wishing me every success. Whereas in fact, the person is saying, you, are doomed. Good luck with that. Okay? And in Great Britain, someone might say to you when you're in a, a debate or a discussion, <clears throat> with the greatest respect, which means, of course, you are a blithering idiot. <laughs> okay? So there are many sort of things that. And the, the, another field is swearing, relax, 
I'm not going to swear. I'm not even thinking bad words just now. If I drop my cards, I will. But, uh, <clears throat> so, for example, um, I am Scottish. Scottish people are particularly sweary. Okay? But we are nothing compared to Irish people who are looked down upon by the Australians as almost priest-like in the clarity and cleanliness of their language. <clears throat> One of the problems is that um, if you swear the wrong way in some countries, people will think you're rude. They s you can't say that. You've got to say razen, frazen, hasn't frazen. No real words. <clears throat> okay. Um, a problem for uh, young Turkish people is that they listen to uh, rap and hip hop, and they really don't understand that there are lots of words. It's almost every letter of the alphabet, but there are lots of words that you cannot say without actually being from the south side of Chicago or uh, central, south central Los Angeles, etc. And it's always very shocking when I hear lovely, non-racist, totally, totally non-racist young Turkish people using the same words as Snoop Dogg, okay? <laughs> Even Snoop Dogg's friends are, are embarrassed by the way he talks. So, so all of these things are, they are sources of misunderstanding and embarrassment. Uh, however, the great thing about these is that they can be taught. Tragically, I'm not allowed to teach the sweary ones, okay? But they can be taught, which means that um, those problems can be, to a great extent, uh, avoided, let's say. But there are other types of problems which we don't really teach. Actually, in our school, in uh, the, the communications course for prep students, we do cover some of this, which is fantastic. So what I'm going to talk about now is Failing to be pragmatic. It's called pragmatic failure, pragmatic breakdown. And when we say the wrong thing, we give people the wrong impression, even though we're trying to be nice. Okay? I'll give you a, a classic. This is one of the best known examples of intercultural socio pragmatic failure. And uh, I may have mentioned this before. It's when Irish people and Germans are together. Now, <clears throat> If uh, you go to Ireland and someone offers you a cup of tea, you say, oh, no, thank you. They'll offer again. Oh, no, don't trouble yourself. They will offer again. Well, if you're having one yourself, they will offer again. Okay, fine, yes. Okay. <clears throat> In Germany, they ask once, and if you say, no, thank you, that's it. It's as if tea doesn't exist. Okay. But the, the big problem here is, so, so an Irish person thinks, how rude. The German, when it, who's in Ireland, just thinks, my God, these, these, are these Irish people stupid? I've already said no. Okay? So both people there are behaving according to their own normal, uh, which causes, can cause serious mm, social problems. Now, these problems, these pragmatic failures, also exist in our own language. Uh, and I'm going to give you some examples of dangerous speech acts. Okay. So, so one of them uh, is uh, suggesting. Okay. When, we, when someone has a problem and we are suggesting solutions. Uh, we can, if we do it the wrong way, we can sound like a know-all. We can sound disdainful. <laughs> Come on, just do that. Okay, we can sound arrogant. Um, no, by the way, none of those things are things you should be aiming for, kids, right? That's, uh, those, those are not good qualities. Um, the most direct way of giving uh, advice, okay, is probably the easiest, especially when we're language learners. But it's really the most dangerous way to go about it. For example, okay, so do this. Okay, we have to turn something. Just turn it, and you'll see that will work. That's one way. Too direct, too bossy. Okay, um, try turning it. What about turning it? Hey, have you thought about turning it? Let's turn it. 
Okay, and we've gradually gone, the last one, let's turn it, means we're both at fault in some way. I am sharing the problem with you. Get off. Okay? Uh, so by doing this, we, uh, we protect the other person's face, their, their feeling of being valued in society, etc. And all of these things are to do with protecting people's face. Okay? How... How they feel they are perceived in society. Are they being seen as being smart, dumb, naive, etc.? Okay? So even something as, as positive as suggesting a solution can be quite dangerous socially. Another one is praise. Okay? Telling someone they have done something well. A big danger with that, especially in Great Britain, is that they, if you do it too strongly, oh, fantastic! It could be sarcastic. In fact, in Scotland, the word fantastic is only used when you're being sarcastic. Nothing has ever been fantastic in Scotland, except apparently the day I got on the plane and flew to Istanbul. Okay, so uh, with praise, it sounds sarcastic, it can sound sarcastic. What, the best way to do this, to avoid embarrassment also, because it might sound too strong. The, the, this is too much praise for me. <laughs> Don't, please. I'm, a, I'm just a regular genius. <laughs> then uh, you, what you do is you, you praise the techniques that the person has used, or you, you describe the amount of time they spent on it, or the detail that they went into. Not praising the person for being brilliant, but praising the quality of the work. And then there's no embarrassment, hopefully. Okay, and now we come to the most dangerous one, which is disagreeing with people. Okay, uh, <clears throat> in Great Britain, we are obsessed with protecting the other person's face. So let's say someone says, the moon is a very large camembert cheese. Okay. <clears throat> It's a way, the best British way to say that you disagree is, <clears throat> really, I, I, I don't know anything about astronomy. Okay, so you're being very in, indirect. So you might say, really? Or, hmm, that one there, hmm, means <laughs> you obviously left your brain on the dolmish. <laughs> <clears throat> so, hmm, okay, very, very dangerous term in English. <clears throat> it's like saying something like, what did you just say about my mother? It's, it's that kind of level of dangerous. Hmm. In American English, uh, Americans are, are much more direct, which is, British people and Americans are not really separated by potato, no, so tomato, tomato. We're really uh, separated by pragmatics. And it's completely normal for American people to say, I totally disagree. And then they'll explain exactly why they disagree. And that is completely normal and acceptable and polite in American discourse, American pragmatics. But once an American has said to a British person, I totally disagree, we are planning their death. <laughs> okay, and it's not going to be a nice one. <sighs> Yeah, tell Johnny I really loved that little statue of the dog he made in primary school. No, no, it involves fire and stakes, okay? So, <clears throat> one thing that's very important to remember, folks, is that uh, all of these rules change with friendship, okay? All of them. The closer you get to someone, the less you need to be all, um, well, <clears throat> it goes from, excuse me, if it's not too much trouble, would you mind if I opened the window, to I'm opening the window, okay? As we get closer uh, in our relationships with people, the length of our sentences in these pragmatic circumstances also gets shorter. <clears throat> so, how can uh, people who are moving to uh, new um, circumstances, new places, how can they actually avoid making these mistakes? Well, I think there are, there are various ways in which uh, the arts can help us. Uh, the first one, I would say the most obvious one, is to read the literature 
that is written for your age group, so particularly for students, young adult literature. And as much as possible, things about ordinary people in ordinary circumstances doing ordinary things. Okay? Because there you can pick up on how people talk to each other, how people talk to their friends, their loved ones, their families, their teachers, the authorities, doctors, etc. Okay? And in all of those, you have a kind of entertaining um, manual on how to behave linguistically in a different society. Time consuming, perhaps. So what you can also do is watch TV shows. I strongly recommend any long running television series, soap operas, comedies. Probably soap operas and comedies are best, okay? Especially if they are about, for example, teenagers or 20 somethings. Um, I don't really recommend uh, Hollywood movies because there's too much exploding going on. And you may have noticed, explosions are statistically insignificant in most of our lives. And uh, it's very rare for us to have to say, let's get out of here! Although I hear that as I'm arriving in my classroom quite often. Okay? So, in blockbusters, Hollywood blockbusters, etc., uh, the, the problem is that... Uh, all emotions are heightened too much. So they, they don't give us very much um, good linguistic data about how we can fit into our, our new circumstances, our new societies. And of course, as we do that, it may surprise you, but we go from being the abnormal one to being normal. And I wish, I hope this was useful for you in the future in shuffling off your abnormality and become becoming more normal wherever you may be. Thank you very much.